Shut up and sit down. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Ken Fletcher Podcast. This is episode 26, Marvel Now? Question mark? <laughs> um, I want to say thank you for listening. And if you stumbled across us on the interwebs, uh, you can check us out at kfpodcast.com, facebook.com's backslash kfpodcast, and Ken Fred Podcast on the Twitter. The Twitter. The Twitter. Uh, today on the show, we're going to talk about Marvel Now, and their number one's coming out. But first, before we get into that, to the right of me, I got the producer extraordinaire, Justin. <laughs> hey, everybody. And to the left of me, I have the bald wonder, oh. Fat Jesus. <laughs> fat Jesus. <laughs> bald Jesus. Bald Jesus, sir. Uh, bald chubby Jesus. <laughs> Donald. And we have no guest stars Cause, again because no one likes us. No one likes us. All right, so on the show, we're going to talk about what is Marvel now. Uh, go over a little bit of what they're calling uh, the new status quo Ooh. for the Marvel comic books. Uh, we're going to talk about the new books that they've announced so far. Yeah. And then what do we think is better, Marvel Now or what Rebirth is doing? Rebirth. Uh, All right. We'll yeah. see you next week. <laughs> this is going to be short and sweet. And do you mean Don Hayton on things? No, that? it's going to be 40 minutes. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, for the fans of the cheese, I apologize. You're not going to hear much from me this episode. Oh, <laughs> so all awesome. the ladies just hung up. <laughs> <laughs> no cheese, Tom. <huh? laughs> Someone's going to stumble across That's all right. Thing. They'll just watch you on your webcam, your webcam show. Where you sit around, around at home and do nothing all day long and sleep. Just play Ark. Stare at my Netflix screen. What's it? Your, uh... And look at your dirty kitchen. <laughs> What's that thing where people watch people play games? What is it? Uh... Let's Play. No, there's, a, there's an actual Twitch. Is it oh, Twitch? yeah. Twitch. Yeah. Twitch. Justin's TV. Twitch. Yeah. Justin's Twitch. All right. Marvel Now. What is Marvel Now? I don't well, know. Well, I'll tell you all about it. Marvel Now is stupid. <laughs> um... It's basically something that they did. When was the first one they did? Two years ago? Two or three years ago. They usually go through this thing where they do either an all-new, all-different event, where they title all their books, all-new, all-different, or they do Marvel Nows, nah, and they've done a couple other. What were some of the other ones they've done? All-new, all-different, extraordinary, superior. Yeah, they put um, all these different adjectives, adjectives in front of their titles. So they're bringing, they just redid this line, <coughs> what, in January? A little bit right if around that, the time? Like this November, December into January. Yeah. Right, where they just, they redid all their titles. Mm -hmm. They put out all new number ones. And now, come September, they're redoing them again. And it's so dumb. I mean, they just keep putting out more number ones, more number ones, more number ones. Knowing the business like I do, I can explain why if you want me to right sure, now. Sure, Ken. I would really like to know. September is typically the worst uh, sales for the comic book industry over the year. Because all the kids go back to school. And all the kids go back to school. It's like people are going to start saving money up for Christmas presents. Winter's rough for any kind of collectible that's monthly because the indisposable income that people have are saved onto gifts and whatnot, getting ready for the winter. So typically in the industry, September was the worst month in sales for new books. Also, too, for some reason, that's when you're, that's when the summer events are ending. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of things, just that time of period, it just always kind of hit a, a lull. Hence why when New 52 started five to six years ago, they started in September, mm. which started a trend of September being a very strong month in the new, right. new comic book industry. Uh, that's why you see, typically, this stuff happen. Right. Okay. Makes sense. That was DC telling consumers, screw your Christmas presents, you buy our shit now. Well, also for a while, <laughs> that was the same month that DC typically put out all their special issues. That's when they did the hologram covers that sold really well. Uh -huh. That's when they did um, all their weird, like, niche people thinking they were going to be worth money covers and stuff. They would do, typically do in September to help sell. Okay, so that's why they're doing Marvel now in September, then. Correct. Thank you, Ken, for that long-winded explanation. Of You're that. welcome. <laughs> I'm here to help. Ken, the business insider of the podcast. Well, I mean, I know some things. So Not Marvel much. did Secret War, which ended, it was like last summer. Supposed to end in September. They were so behind it, got it, it didn't end so okay. Right, and that like relaunched all their titles. It basically wiped out the Fantastic Four, wiped out large parts of the X Men, and kind of was supposed to be. At that time, they announced the this is our universe going forward. These are our books. This is what we're going to have. Yes. And no more than nine months later, they're redoing it again. Yes. And now they're telling us again that this is the new status quo. These characters we're going to introduce and bring to you. This is who it is. No, missing from that, no Tony Stark. Well, can I explain real quick why they're they're doing the number one? Sure, we need it. I, I was just thinking we need another long winded explanation. There's been a stat. There's been people. They've done surveys on this. The consumers, when it comes to comic books, if there's a number one printed anywhere on the comic, 
it'll sell anywhere between 25 to 75% more right. than a number of regular issue comics. So that's why every book now doesn't make it more than like 10 issues without getting a number They're one. doing a number one every year. They're essentially rebooting it every year with a different name or whatever to uh, fit into the niche that is huge of graphic novels. Yeah. And so they make anywhere between one. Do we have a niche counter going? He said niche like three times so far. Do we have a niche counter? I'll give you a niche <laughs> counter. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, uh, so that's what it, it's, sorry. I'll stop talking about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I really like this business. I'm a businessman. I'm doing business things. Well, I mean, that's always that, that's why I work here. It's that kind of stuff I find fascinating. Hmm. That some schmuck off the streets. Well, perfect case in point. Captain America number one is comes out two months ago. Yeah, everyone goes, you know, flip shit because it's coming out, and then he says, "Hail Hydra!" Again, USA Today picks it up, goes nuts, and I sell out of a, a ton of copies. Yeah. So you know, it's it, it's it's funny, and then now everyone that actually wants to read it can't. Well, I got second prints of it. But typically, you know, you can't find it. So. All right. What do you think about that? Huh? I, I'm talking to Justin. Justin's sitting there very confused, <laughs> looking, smiling, thinking of cheese. <laughs> <laughs> you have a picture of Justin looking up and there's just cheese wheels. <laughs> oh, we can definitely do. Just cheese rolling by. Yeah. <laughs> with comic books in this way. <laughs> cheese and comic. Um, you know there's a milk and cheese comic? You might actually like it. I did not know that. Yeah. I'll have to check it out. Good uh-huh. in the 90s. Hey. Right. We're going. Hey, you done? <laughs> so, like I said, Tony Stark missing from from all these regular Captain America. You have Hydra Captain America. You have Hydra Cosmic Cube. Uh, Deadpool America. kind of MIA. No, no, a lot of these, which is shocking because yes. they really like him. And they're still soliciting him to have three to four books. So I don't know where he's right. going to be. What about the Spider Man book that he's in? Is that not part of this? I don't know if that's going to continue. Yeah, I don't know. We don't okay. know if it's going to continue. He's in stuff now, but when they. They released oh, this. Oh, that's right. This doesn't come till September. I'm an idiot. Don't pay attention right. to me. So we're going to put through on the screen now this image of the new status quo and go through some of these people. The poster? Let me look it up so I can see. Yeah, so the picture currently is on your screen. This it's is, as you can see, it has it has um, Doctor Strange in the middle, or not Doctor, who am I thinking? Doctor Doom. Sorry, I'm an idiot. Edit that out. Mm-hmm. Um, in the middle. And, oh, good, thank you. So and Doctor so Doom is holding the Iron Man helmet. Well, he's not in the middle, he's on the left. There's right. definitely a, a separation between There's you. a separation. So the, the poster says, divided we stand. Right. Yes. So on the left-hand side over there, you have Solo, the green dude, right? Yes. Solo was a what? A character oh, a, from a... a D, st- he's a D-list... A uh, D-list stupid character Spider-Man. from a Spider-Man run in the 90s. He's just a guy with guns, and he has limited teleportation, which is the stupidest thing I've ever read. Yeah, I don't understand what Which means he can teleport from the couch to the fridge and back. <laughs> or yeah. he can, there's a reason to jump on top of buildings or something. Yeah, that, that's about it. You have, I think the guy up there is Full Killer. Yeah, that's Full I Killer. I don't even know who Full Killer is. Full Killer is an old, um, he's actually like a very old-timey uh, character from like uh, the Invaders, Captain America World War II. He's not, any, he's not no household name. No, and the only reason that anyone might know him that's in the comics nowadays is Kirkman, who created The Walking Dead, wrote a story for him, a very graphic story, uh, probably about 10 to 15 years ago. And it was okay. Dope. And then you have, uh, you see down there uh, below him, Jessica Jones, which is normal. Quake is from, uh, you know, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. She's popular Daisy. in that show. Yeah. Captain Marvel, of course. Yeah. Electra, fine. That's Thor right above her. He's going by th- the Odin son right now. Yeah, like, because with the chrome Thor. chess piece. Yeah, it looks like the chrome chess piece and... All right, what what's the giant foot? The in big the giant foot, I think, is a there's a character that was introduced in New Avengers called American Kaiju, and he was essentially like a, think of Godzilla. It's Godzilla with a big American flag on his chest. <laughs> <laughs> it's really stupid. Yeah. This is the most ridiculous thing. Some people area. thought it might be Fing Fang Foom, but they're like, no, it's American Kaiju. Because you haven't seen Fing Fang Foom. In- which is dumb. I like now, it. well, yeah, I like Fin Fang Foom, but American Hydra is dumb. Yeah. Doctor Doom, of course, holding, holding the helmet. Mm-hmm. To the right of him, you have Slapstick. Real quick, if, if the image is up, doesn't Doom look like an older, what's his name, James Franco? Yeah, what's they're it? drawing him to look like James Franco. He, it's even got the head tilt. Yeah, he's, it looks like if you put James Franco in a weird green suit. But right. Go on. Sorry, Slapstick? That's all right. Then we have Slapstick. Okay. Now, Slapstick is a stupid-ass character. Oh, so bad. It's literally a character, and if you haven't heard this one, Justin, he's he got this power from like a chemical reaction or something it's like something that. Something And he's cartooning. So he walks around. It'd be like Donald Duck walking around with him. Imagine who framed Roger Rabbit in real life. Yeah, that's what it's like. So when you throw him against the wall, like, you can smash his head, his eyeballs pop out, then he pops back to place. Yeah. You could stretch him out and fling him. You know, like, like the mask. Yeah. He doesn't really yeah. have any kind of, He can't be killed because he's not... It's just, yeah, you can't kill him, but he doesn't, doesn't really hurt him. you. I don't know. Yeah. He carries a big hammer. It's stupid. I don't know what... I don't understand how to excite people. Yeah. You have Gamora then in there, of course. 
She's from Guardians. Is that Gamora there? That's it's, not She-Hulk? No, it's Gamora. She has the sword and all that shit. And why is she street clothes? I don't know. Then you have Captain America, the Hydra agent, below her. Um, of course, you know, with that shit going on. Panther's normal. That's that's the same. And then that's Cable. The only X Men and the only mutant f- featured on there is Cable. He has a goofy looking outfit on, and it looks like he has that techno organic virus back. I was yeah. gonna say, from a distance, it looks like almost looks like Punisher. No, yeah, he's yeah got you the... wouldn't know because you can't really tell. But... So then we go over to the other side. That side, uh, where was Doctor? Because they said said Doctor Strange in there, but is he? Yeah, he's he right above uh, Kamala Khan's arm. He is. Yeah, th- Justin's circling his head right now. Oh, okay. All right. So he's over there. They had Doctor Strange on the one article as like the head of this group for some reason. I don't know what, but he's in the very back of the picture. Yeah, he's yeah. in the very back of the picture. Does that mean um, Solo's the, the? Yeah. So then over there you have Gwenpool, which Gwenpool wasn't Gwenpool. Correct me if I'm wrong. Just a variant cover of like a Daredevil book. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> and Ken's going to talk for a while again, ladies and gentlemen. Go ahead. Yes, one month they decided to do all their characters based around Gwen Stacy. Uh, they did one of Gwenpool. It sold the most of all the comics. They decided to make more Gwenpool and they made a character. Apparently, the character's name is Gwyneth Poole. It's not Gwen Stacy. In as, and now as she's a, a a focal point of the, of the new status quo. Yep, which is goofy. Yep, I don't I don't really. And care. the outfit's weird. Yep. Yeah. Well, it's just a, yeah, it's it's like a sexy. Then dead the boy. dude above her is Mosaic. He's the only or like really original character other than American stupid kaiju. He's supposed to be an Inhuman. He's the only Inhuman on the on the board because remember they were pushing the Inhumans hard. Yeah. So is he the one that can see the future? Something. I no. I don't know if that's the same guy. I think that's those are two different people currently in the Civil War run. Then you have Miss America. I like her. I like her. She was from the New Avengers. America Chavez. She was from the New Avengers, Young Avengers. She's a cool character. She's from another dimension and all that stuff, you know. And for all the, uh, you know, LBGT community, she's, you know, like a known lesbian in the books. She's not a character that they made a lesbian. And also, too, it's a character they've written well into that, that, you know, orientation. In that role. It's not forced. It's just that's who she is. They don't really dwell on it too much. It's just her life. And, you know, she's a girlfriend in the comic. She's cool. She teleports. She's strong. She's a cool character. Squirrel Girl, who I hate. I, I, I'm not going to swear, but because I don't want you to have to do any editing. But I can't stand Squirrel Girl. I don't understand the love for this character gets and why everybody is so. You you were showing a picture of Anna Kendrick. As I, I don't Girl. I don't understand the I character. I don't want her in any of these. But Avenger if Anna movies. Kendrick plays Squirrel Girl, she'll be my new favorite character. <laughs> Squirrel Girl is so stupid. I don't get the love of her. I like her, her as the the, the the babysitter. Yeah, you know, when Luke. she was Luke Cage and and, and uh, Jessica Jones's nanny, but now she's like a forefront in the in the Marvel Universe, it was a joke character. What yeah. are her powers? She, she talks to squirrels. squirrels. Is she strong or fast? Or She's she has squirrel-like agility. Yeah. agility. She has a tail and agility, and Wolverine banged her a couple times, which <laughs> everybody thought was funny, and then they were laughing at him, because they're like, really, Wolverine, her too? You know, she used to hang out with the Great Lakes Avengers, which we'll get to them later. Yeah. Um, who who's else next we, to squirrel? You got the all-new Wasp, who's flying up in the air. She's a new Wasp. She's a member of the one of these teams. I think she was an all-new Avenger. So it's not Janet Vanda. It's not Janet it's Van Dyne. Daughter, it? No, I don't think it's her daughter either. And you have Prowler, who again oh. was a goofy Spider Man. He Sp- Solo and Prowler were around at the same time. Yeah. Well, Prowler at least was has been in a book. Well, Solo has too. Solo was in some Deadpool books. Yeah. Prowler has been in the Amazing Spider Man books because when they said that Spider Man is kind of international, Prowler was one of the Spider Men working for Peter Parker yeah, that's in right. like in, in the West Coast. Yeah. So there's like multiple Spider Men running around the country. Whatever. This girl down here is Moon Girl. I don't know who Moon Girl oh, is. Oh, she's with uh, Devil Dinosaur. Devil Dinosaur is much like American Moon Boy, Kaiju. Moon Boy and Moon yeah, Girl? Yeah, well, it's, she's the one that controls Devil Dinosaur, which is a giant... I thought much. Moon Boy controlled him. It's Moon Girl. It's Moon Girl now. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Then you have uh, Rary Williams, who's going to be the new Iron Man. That's her name. Rary Williams. Rary, Rary Williams. We'll get to her later, too. Got some comments on her. Then you have Kate Bishop, Bishop yeah. Wolver- uh, Hawkeye. She's from Young Avengers also. She's cool. I don't mind her. I like her. I always like her in the Young Avengers. Then you have Amadeus Cho as the Hulk, which everybody's thinking. It's, that's not Bruce Banner Hulk. That's Amadeus Cho as the Hulk, which is dumb because I read his book for a little while. It's kind of annoying. It, it's almost like, remember we did a thing ring from the last episode? Yeah. He had like a Hulk ring on where he had an armband. He would press it and turn it all. Yeah. It was, you know, pretty stupid. Miles Morales, of course, the Spider-Man that I don't like. And then Miss Marvel, Ken's girl. I, I th- that book, when it first came out, I haven't read it in a while. It was one of the better books because it's a it was a new character they created. Right. She, I don't. She's yeah, fine. I could go into yeah, it. Yeah, she's fine. 
Now, I just, I'm not, Miles Morales was an ultimate character. I don't really like that he's taking over. Like we said, missing from this world. Where's Peter Parker? He's gone, and this is yeah. now Miles Morales. It's just, you know, more of that crap. So, but anyway, that's the, that's the new status quo. So talking in new books, um, let's talk about Iron Man first. So the big story that came out this week is they're replacing Tony Stark with Rary Williams as Iron Man. Yes. Now, I was reading the Invincible Iron Man line, and I saw the story of when they introduced her. Now, when they introduced her, she was a girl that found an Iron Man glove, like part of a, his suit from a battle. And she reverse engineered it into a suit of armor. Because, you know, she's that smart. And which, to me, kind of is annoying because, like, Tony Stark's supposed to be, like, above and beyond everybody else. But here's my thing with it. I'm fine with... Marvel used to add on sidekicks before, like, DC yeah. used to do. Spider-Man had people that were... He had the Scarlet Spider. Yeah. And, you know, there's different people like that that have been there. If they were going to introduce this girl and make her into her own armor, and she'd call herself Rocket. Or, or uh, even now that War Machine's gone. To be the new War Machine. She could be the new War Machine. Something where she's, like, a sidekick in the book, and then later on maybe join a Young Avengers team. We had Iron Lad before. Who was yeah. in the? I'm fine with that. I do not understand why she has to take over and she's wearing it. They showed her new outfit today online. It's just a female Iron Man suit. It's the same color scheme. It's all that. So he's going to give her a suit or she's going to make a suit. I don't know why we have to keep replacing male characters with female characters. We made a female Thor. That's all they can come up with is, what can we make Thor better? Oh, we'll make her female. There's a female, scar um, um, you know, the Iron Spider costume. There's yeah. Mary Jane running around in that. There's a female Spider-Man now. Yeah. Now there's a female Iron Man. Like, what is more? All Marvel does is just make PC things. we got to be diverse. we, we got to make her a girl. And it's not even the fact that they're making it diverse. I feel like all they're doing is changing for change sake. Like, if you want it, there's no reason to make a character like Iron Man diverse because he's been diverse for decades. You know, Rhodey was his best friend, gave him the suit. That book for a large chunk of time wasn't Tony Stark as Iron Man. Yeah, through, like, Rhodey was Iron Man for I, a while. Rhodey was Iron Man and Tony was dealing with his right. addiction issues. Right. Like, the universe, if you're going to do a, a book of the universe and it's going to be connected around Tony and Tony's not gonna be Iron Man, but maybe he's helping her and whatever. That's fine. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't know. Like this just seems like a, it, it's forced stuff like that on you to go. Uh, it, it's a Mark way to get inside USA Today. Yes, it's a way to get. It's like when they turned Iceman gay. Iceman was straight for sixty years. He had girlfriends. He had yeah. all this stuff. They introduced a young Iceman from the past, and he's oh, did you know I'm gay? And then he has a conversation with the old Iceman. You're gay, dude. And he's like, oh, no, I'm not. Oh yeah, I am gay. Oh, I've been lying to myself. Like it was so forced and garbage. It was yeah. unbelievable. He's not gay. He had, why do you have to make Iceman gay when you have gay X-Men? Yeah. North Star's gay. Uh, what's that one name? The Lizard Boy. Anoli or something uh, like that. No, I don't yeah. know how you say that. He's gay. They're all likable characters. If you want to promote the gay character, use the one that's currently an X-Men. And if I, I, I can't really speak for it, but I feel like that would be more annoying to turn someone. Oh, all of a sudden, this is this person's gay just for yeah, this year. That's just what they're doing. And that's what they're doing now. Iron Man should be a young African-American girl because it's so diverse. And everybody goes, wow, that's correct. That's great, Marvel. Why can't, like I said, her character was interesting enough. Make her her own character. Yeah, give her, and if you want to give she her. She wants to have her own book, give her yeah, a book. I just, I, it, all that Marvel's doing with all this stuff ever since Secret War, it just seems like cash grab. It's like, how can I get you to buy this book for six right. issues? Oh, all right. If you're not going to buy this, this book for six issues, how can I get you to buy the graphic novel? Like, how can I get you to just buy stuff from us right. without having compelling stories, creative writers, and, and quality art? Because they can't afford those three. Right. Your thoughts? I, you know, same thing. I, I don't understand it. I don't. I don't really care either. Quite honestly, <laughs> I, I just. And good night. <laughs> it just. She also doesn't give a. It, it, <laughs> it, they're they're gonna make a fifteen year old girl Iron Man. Yeah, he won't. She won't fight him. At least well, not for but, a while. But but again, like Don said, give her make her Iron Woman, Iron, Iron girl. girl, and she can have her own book. Call you her know. Alloy. Call her anything. Actually, just Alloy. call it what's her name? Rary Williams. Just call it. Hey, this book's Rary Williams. <laughs> what girl of art or of Iron or something? <laughs> she was she was interesting enough in the book where like. She was making this thing, and the FBI was investigating her. She had to escape and hide her again. It was a good enough compelling story that you don't need to be. Tony Stark's gone. And, and again, I don't want to get to the part we're going to compare with Rebirth, but I'll do it now anyway. Is Rebirth perfect? You have Batman in a book. Mm -hmm. You still have your Batman. You want to read Batman? Batman's in her. You know who's also in the book? There's a new Robin. He's an, a young African-American boy. Yep. He's, he's taking over a new mantle. His story is fine. You still have Batman. 
And they but you have him. two other characters. You introduce Gotham and Gotham Girl. They're yep. two new characters. You don't know a lot about them, but you still have Batman. If you want to read Batman, you want new characters, you still have it. Mm-hmm. Same thing as Superman. They give him a son. You still got Clark Kent, but you have his son now. You have different characters they're introducing, but they stay true to their legends who people like us want to still read. DC has done that, has always done one thing well, and that is to create compelling sidekicks in and evolve them into characters people want to read. Yeah. Like, if you look at Dick Grayson, The Evolution, which went over, granted, you know, a yeah, long, long period time. of time. Yeah. But Dick Grayson was an afterthought, and then they, they grew, they made him grow up, did a, a long story where he was wanted to leave Bruce. Yeah. All of his Robins. Yeah. Look at Jason Todd's now the Red Hood. Yeah. He's a compelling character. You have Red Robin. Yeah. You, all his people have all grown into even his son is now in a, a, yeah. a duo book with Superman's son. son. Yeah. All his characters have become interesting characters on their own. Yeah. Marvel, you have this crap. So let's go through some of these books real quick. All right. You have U.S. Avengers, which they're taking new, US event, new Avengers, turning into U.S. Avengers. This is the, which, if you look at this cover that we have on the screen right now, you, you have. So I, I, I love this cover. I think this cover is great. Now, I, I've been poo- I'll poo-poo Marvel, but I might, I'll read the first book of this to see. Well, again, what. you have a female U.S. or U.S. or what's her name? What's that? Iron Patriot. Iron Patriot, which uh, another one. Uh, Purple hair. I don't know. Yeah. You have, but Red Hulk with that mustache. I love Red Hulk. Is hilarious. Um, you have Luke Cage and um, Jessica, Jones. Jessica Jones's daughter from the future as some kind of Captain America. Uh, of course, Bobby and Sam from the X-Men. That's, again, the only... X Men getting some love as Bobby the Costa and Cannonball, which is so strange because, in how they've written those two. In the yeah, they're game. just Avenger books now when they're yeah. X Men all the way. How's that tank though? Have two uh, two barrels? That's all I want to know. Yeah, I don't know who's the character in the middle. Squirrel Girl. Oh yeah, Squirrel Girl with her outfit Red, on. Yeah. yeah, they have her in a book. I don't know. I like how everyone also is wearing like America colors. Like, and the thing with this book is with with Marvel. You pick this up, you read four issues of it, you might enjoy a little bit, then it'll completely change. Yep. The wipe out the team, the book will be canceled by issue eight and on to something else. Yeah. So it's kind of pointless. Tony Ho is the Iron Patriot. Yeah, I don't know. Tony, Tony Ho. I don't know. Then you have that Champions book that they're putting together. Oh, I'll, I'll check out the first couple of that because Miss Marvel's in. You have basically the three young kids from the Avengers run, it's Nova, all, it's Nova Miles, all, yeah. and Marvel Girl, joining up with young Cyclops. Amadeus Cho Hulk and a couple other people. I think Blink's in it too, maybe. Oh, really? Blink? Yeah, I think it was Blink. That's not it. That's not it. But anyway, we'll show them that. But I don't know. I mean, that's another book that's going to be canon 10 issues anyway, so what's the point? <laughs> They're bringing back the Great Lakes Avengers, speaking of Squirrel Girl. So she, but she's not in that. She's not. It's just the original team that was basically just a book to make fun of other superheroes. Yeah, it was basically to make fun of themselves. Instead of Mr. Fantastic, you had Flat, Flat Man, Man and, and Big Bertha. Big Bertha. Who was just Dinosaur. Funny. I don't know if Dinosaur is in the cover of that, but I think it's... Oh, jeez, Justin. Oh, yeah. It's, I think it's it. Doorman, who can create door portals. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Isn't yeah. Atlas's brother or something like I that? I think something weird. weird. And then there's Big Bertha. Big Bertha's like a bikini model. Mm-hmm. But when she activates her ability, she gets all fat and strong, all fat and big and weird looking. Oh, Impossible Man! And man. then you have that one guy that just gets killed. He dies. Yeah, Immor- or Immortal Man. The Immortal Man, or yeah. something like that. But that's it. It's gonna be those four. It's Door- Doorman's in the middle. It's, it's like black. it's like Kenny from South Park. Yeah, when, yeah. when, he, turn, when he turns into Mysterio. Yeah, they're, they're Mysterion. Are, they're a whole. They're a weird group of people. And it's supposed to be making fun that Squirrel Girl like went on to do better things. That are still the Great Lake. Of I don't know. It's just books. They're bringing out books that are so weird. They're doing a solo title. He's getting his own book. Yeah. Doctor Strange is getting like a Mystic Avengers theme. I'm all right with that. Which could be okay. Infamous Iron Man is another title they announced. Which is supposed to be just Doom with all Doctor turns. Doom as I, Iron Man or something like that. It seems like the theme of all of these, the people, like, because also, where's female Thor? Where's Jane Foster Thor? She's not in any of these. I don't know if her time's done because they're doing a book called Unworthy Thor instead of the Mighty Thor mm-hmm. where he's following a new hammer. Which sounds like, because you explained it to me earlier, it's, it's an like an axe hammer. It could be the ultimate. It's, one. It's, I think it's the ultimate hammer. Mm-hmm. It really seems like there's, for some reason, all their big key people are all really, are, MIA. Or MIA for some reason. And you know how I really feel is they're going to keep these guys like this until the movies catch up. Yeah. When when Avengers comes out and all the Cap and them are all back, then they'll all return. Yeah. You know, which I thought they were bringing Cap back, but they brought this Hydra agent guy back, which was kind of dumb. I also feel like it's going to be 
I, I, I honestly think that this is going to be the status quo for Marvel mm-hmm. to F up the universe as much as possible. So in two years when the Infinity Gauntlet movie comes out, you're going to get an Infinity Gauntlet comic to book make series it better. where they fix everything. Because who in the, who's sitting there having a production meeting going, Slapstick. What about him? Oh, you mean that dumb character we created in the nine? How about Solo and Full Killer and... Oh, yeah, that's good. Let's do them. Instead of like, hey, let's just bring the Fantastic Four back. Yeah. Remember they had a book for us for over 70 years? Yeah. Why don't we do a new Fantastic Four book? Hey, I got an idea. Why don't we do a decent, amazing Spider-Man? How about a good X-Men book? But it's almost like you're going to forget about all those great X-Men and Fantastic Four storylines. And unfortunately, there's not a lot of comic shops that carry back issues well. So you're it's like not, they're erasing them from history. They're erasing them from history. And then whenever they come back, they can be like, oh, we'll just rewrite all these stories that we already have for them. Yeah, we'll just years. do you know all that stuff over yeah. again. It's just amazing to me that characters like Gwenpool and these other people it makes are, no sense. are American kaiju or in big... You have a book called U.S. Avengers with all these ridiculous people covered in American stuff and, instead of like a regular, decent, uncanny X-Men book. Yeah, uncanny X-Men sounds weird to say, and it shouldn't be, because there's been uncanny. there's been every other kind of uncanny book yeah. except for uncanny. They've ruined X-Men. the name uncanny. Yeah, because yeah. whenever I... You know, there's some things, Amazing Spider-Man, Uncanny X-Men, Invincible Iron Man, Mighty Thor. Yeah. Um, what's the Hulk? Incredible Hulk. Like all these acronyms, but when you say you start talking about, now you have totally awesome Hulk. Yeah. So, what do you think uh, does it is better? Going to be better, Marvel now or DC Rebirth? I'm going to go based off sales, and it's going to be DC Rebirth. All my Marvel books have tanked. Like, and I can't like. There's so much excitement in the air for Rebirth books. Or is it still like that? People come yeah, and buy them. I books? sell out weekly. Yeah, I'm reading. <laughs> I'm buying. <laughs> yeah, buy buying. I'm is key. Buying, buying and reading the not DC stealing Rebirth. from the internet. <laughs> the DC Rebirth. Yeah, books, I mean, because so. you like, I never read Wonder Woman. I read. Wonder Woman number one, and I'm like, this is a good book. Yeah, it's a good book. They, you know, they took a good character, changed her a little bit, but she's still true to form. Batman's been good. Superman's good. They're all decent books, and they didn't have to go all crazy. There's not a book called U.S. This or whatever, you know, with U.S. JLA or the United States Justice League of America in America with the America sign, and and you know, they're not making, they're not taking like some of. They're not taking, let's think of a, a horrible DC character. Wild Dog. Wild Dog, who's going to be on Arrow this season. <laughs> They're not taking Wild Dog and going, Wild Dog number one. But that's like, so- Solo and Wild Dog are the same thing. The character. same thing. That's like, yeah, DC's like, Wild Dog Rebirth number one. Or like, taking a character, not like Slapstick, maybe a little better than Slapstick, but like, um, uh, they're not even doing Dead it for, Man. Dead Man. They're not even doing it for Swamp Thing. Yeah. Swamp Thing's gonna be. They're not be doing like, Dead Man number one. Yeah. You know, Dead Man was a terrible character. I mean, yeah. he's funny in some parts, but. He's you good know. in a crossover. You know, the Rebirth titles coming out are Wonder Woman, Aquaman, Justice League, yeah. Flash. Titans and, and Batman's not wearing an American cape or an yeah. American flag for a cape in Justice League. So so goofy. It's not. <laughs> it's not. Marvel's obsessed with the different adjective. It's Invincible Iron Man, and we have International Iron Man, which yep. had a run that's gone. Now it's Infamous Iron Man. You know, it should be. Uh, it's a filing nightmare. I'll tell you that much. No, it totally is. What do you put it under? Oh, I don't even know. Sorry, I swore Justin. Now we're going to have Inflatable Iron Man. Oh, <laughs> wow. Inflatable Iron Man. How many Bio- more? Well, no. Inflatable Iron Man is um, the Big Hero 6. Baymax? Baymax. Baymax. I'm actually surprised they haven't worked with him. Oh, I'm I'm surprised not either. I mean, it's, it's, it's literally, I think they sit there and go, we need one for Avengers. What should we call it? And they just start looking through the dictionary. Yeah. Looking through the thesaurus. The thesaurus. You know, like... Pretty soon it's going to be the thesaurus. <laughs> Thor. The Thesaurus Thor. Yeah. Unworthy. Undeserving. Underprivileged Thor. <laughs> Unisex Thor. Just keep coming up with stupid stuff instead of just going. Well, now, actually, underprivileged. You could take a homeless kid and have him find Mjolnir just and pick up the hammer. <laughs> oh, it's going to happen. <laughs> Give it six months. I patent that. Right. On the Ken Frederick podcast. Marvel, call me. So is there anything else about this? That no, we're... I think we beat up on Marvel enough. I, right. I hate it. I'm actually to the point where I don't. I used to read every Marvel book, yeah, and I barely read DC except for Batman and Justice League. Now I am totally engrossed in DC books, not really reading much Marvel whatsoever, and I don't really care. And thanks, I'm, Joe Casada. Yeah, thanks a lot. Those, you know what, you asshole. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks for listening, everybody. All right. uh, we'll be back later on this week with some more shit. Please like, share, and like, subscribe. Good night.